yes, absolutely. But I, no bias here, of course, as no. we are taking a look at both incredibly strong players that are sitting at a record of X1 going into Swiss round number six. Um, and as you can see from their teams there as well, there's a you know quite a bit of variability when it comes down to maybe the speed on both of these teams, how quickly or slowly that these more offensive Pokemon can actually dish out damage. Um, I mean, even you know Aaron's team, we've seen Sogaleo a lot, but I feel like there's a, quite a few ways, and one of the reasons why I like seeing Sogaleo and Mimikyu together is because of how many options it provides. The, the Sogaleo is a more unique choice. While it's definitely playable, I think a lot of players shy away from it, maybe. So being able to, to look at that and execute it properly really could give Aaron an advantage. And the Mimikyu as well is something that isn't quite as popular as it, it could be, potentially. Um, it does have that room to, to really control the game. So I'll be excited to see how he plays some of the options on his team. Benny's team uh, obviously can't be ruled out. Uh, certainly got some interesting uh, choices there in the Raichu, I'd argue, is sort of the more unique choice. In these kind of teams, a lot of players for the electric type lean a little bit more towards the Zapdos. Mm -hmm. um, but the Raichu brings something a little bit different with the ability as well. So I'll be curious to see just how that impacts the game. In previous formats that we've seen years and years ago, it isn't quite as offensive as you may think. It does have a really good pool of supportive moves as well. And I'll be hoping to see some of those come through and maybe try and control the game. Fake Out is the most obvious one, but then if you dig a little bit deeper in the move pool, you can find some really fun stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, the fact that we have Groudon versus Groudon, we, we just saw Groudon versus Groudon, but these two teams are completely different. When it, look, when it comes down to maybe the supporting actors that both of these teams have for the damage dealers on the team. Outside of the crowd on Charizard, it's four different Pokemon, which yeah. is really nice that both trainers have identified this pairing, this core that just works so well together, and then gone on and, and built the rest of the team in unique and more personalized ways. So should give us a very, very good match here. Both trainers, though, obviously wanting to stay in contention. They've really pushed themselves towards that top cut. So the leads could be important throughout this set. Well, let's go ahead and see the leads right now as Benny is going to be leading with the Charizard and the Grimmsnarl. And Aaron has the Charizard and the Ndidi. Charizard and supportive partner. That's a pretty good lead. That's something that a lot of trainers have been using for a while now, particularly with Charizard rising to prominence uh, right since we started playing in Sword and Shield. It, it took down that very first regional. It's been around since Series 1, so it's something that you can't ignore. Joe and I harped on a little bit earlier about GMAX Wildfire and just how good that is, so something to look out for. And, and both trainers really have the option to go offensive with the Charizard, but then there's going to be a huge difference in how they provide the support, the Ndidi probably looking to draw a little bit of attention away with the follow me, for example. Mm -hmm. But then the Grimmsnarl being able to set up something like the screens and really hindering the amount of damage that Aaron can do. So both trainers in a, a very neutral position here. I don't think we're going to have a clear advantage at the end of turn one. I think that's going to show turn two, turn three, and, and further into the game. So both trainers taking their time here, locking in the moves. What they choose is going to be important. But to kick it off, what else were we expecting with two Charizards on the field? Absolutely. A Gigantamax was bound to happen here. And the first one is going to be on Aaron's side of the field with that Gigantamax Charizard. This turn one is still very interesting, though, because having the Ndidi next to the Charizard, you could, you know, potentially maybe draw away some of the fire from the Charizard, maybe, you know, blocks and priority moves, who knows, but we do also have a Gigantamax Charizard on the other side of things. So it really does come down to what these supporting Pokemon decide to do in this turn. It's going to be a tough decision um, for both trainers on how to optimize this turn. Indeedy throwing out one of the many options it has. This time it's the helping hand and that could be a big difference. Grimmsnarl being very smart here though. Yeah, a little bit of offense coming in from Aaron's side, but Benny has answered with smart defense. But a max rockfall coming in from Aaron's Charizard. That light screen is not enough there, and that Charizard from Benny is going to be knocked out here. Absolutely phenomenal decision making there from Aaron, not just with the Pokemon he's bringing, but also the Pokemon move choices 
that he has access to, ancient power available on the Charizard, being able to turn that into Max Rockfall with the helping hand just to make sure. Mm -hmm. A huge advantage there that Benny's just given up. And don't forget, he just used his Gigantamax. He's not able to Gigantamax anything else to make up for it. So Aaron has carved out a huge advantage with just all-out offense. This could get a little bit tough for Benny, being forced to bring in the Zacian right away. That's not going to appreciate the Charizard either. And yeah, the light screen was in play, but it is clearly not enough. No, no, it is not. And, and the Zacian here, it is fairly fast, right? Like that is something that you can hopefully use as a way to be able to counteract some of the, the bulk and also just the power that the Gigantamax Charizard on Aaron's side of the field is pushing forward. But Ndidi using Follow Me. Yep, that's, that's really big for the Ndidi keeping that Behemoth Blade away from the Charizard, which would take more damage, because of course it is Gigantamax. So being able to buy a turn for the Charizard after you help to get a knockout, another really good turn, I think. Yeah, the Ndidi is not going to be able to take that Behemoth Blade, even though it did have that Psychic Seed for the special defense. It is a physical attack that's coming through, but it does leave this Charizard open to be able to go for a G-Max Wildfire, but it is targeted into the Grim Snarl, which, you know, works out, I think, well in the situation, even though the Zacian is still around, it's still going to be taking that chip. Probably would have liked that over towards the Zacian, but maybe expecting the Zacian to protect and yeah. allow the Grim Snarl to spirit break and, and lower that special attack. This is clearly going to be the new line of play, I think, for Benny, is land those spirit breaks and then, in combination with the light screen, be able to take those attacks. Mm -hmm. That said, you've got to be a little bit cautious about it because you are taking residual damage from the G-Max Wildfire every single turn. And now the boost has come through in the form of Drought, powering up those Fire-type moves to Aaron's Charizard. So yes, you lowered its special attack, but Drought is going to help make up the difference because it's going to boost those attacks. So the Zacian, again, is in trouble, even after the Spirit Break, even after the Light Screen. Mm -hmm. I don't see a place where it's super safe. The Grim Snarl setting up a Reflect as well, but you're now leaving the Zacian to do all the heavy lifting Whoa. on its own. And Groudon using Bulldoze? Okay, it obviously doesn't affect the Charizard, but you're really using it right now for speed control. So the Zacian and the Grimmsnarl are now going to be slower than this Charizard, and that means that that Zacian is going to be knocked out before it can even get another attack off. Aaron's kind of getting everything he wants here, and Benny has spent a lot of time with the Grimmsnarl trying to slow Aaron down, but it's just not worked. The Grimmsnarl falling as well from GMAX Wildfire, Really a tough game one for Benny, and I think back to the drawing board for game two is, is going to be the play here. There's no way to, to really force that comeback. The ground on, I mean, yes, it's nice to have one of the restricted in the back, but I just don't see a world where it's able to, to take out three Pokemon on its own. No, that's going to be super, super tough there. I, I mean, I, I think, especially seeing that we had a, a bit of a supportive uh, build on the... Um, on Aaron's, like with the Bulldoze, I think that's really interesting. It also reveals a bit of information as well going into this game number two that if there's a weakness policy per se on the Solgaleo, that, well, that, that's a whole strategy he's left at home, right? He's yeah. left the the complete use of Solgaleo and Mimikyu as a combination on the bench, didn't even need it, and only had one Pokemon remaining, so couldn't bring both of them at once. Uh, very commanding game number one there from Aaron, and that's kind of the confidence you need to, to be taking into the round, right? To You've got to be pushing on, you've got to be going in mm -hmm. to the last couple of rounds after this one, feeling good so you don't drop another game. Benny's got to go to the drawing board, though. There was, there was a lot of things there that just went wrong. That turn one, unfortunately disastrous. Uh, that's, you know, you can't lose your Gigantamax like that. But on the flip side, that's not something he knows about. That's why I like best of three, because he's seen it, he knows, yep, indeed he can just go for it and, and you know, give the helping hand over and, and, and the max rockfall is an option too, not something mm -hmm. that everyone brings on their Charizard. So that's uh, certainly something to think about, definitely in the leads, but throughout the course of the game as well. Well, you're, you're going to also have to think about max rockfall Charizard throughout the entire competition, because even on that last game that Gabby and I commentated, both Charizards had max rockfall. Yeah, it's, so it's, it's a big tech move that has become more mainstay over the course of the last few months. It's definitely gone up from it's an option to you probably should just to win the mirror yeah every single time and i, I really really like that um the, the thing i think could get tough 
is that Aaron has so many more things to reveal. We mm -hmm. didn't see his fourth Pokemon. I'm assuming the Solgaleo, obviously. But it's going to get a little bit tricky if, if that Solgaleo then comes with the Mimikyu, for example. I mean, the Mimikyu has access mm -hmm. to Trick Room as well. So if the whole speed thing is a big factor in this, that could just be a difference maker. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and that was the other thing about even just how Benny is supposed to approach the second game that I think is really difficult is Aaron also revealed the bulldoze on the ground on, well, right? Not, not just the bulldoze, he reveals the choice scarf too. Oh, true. <laughs> because he went first. So he goes first, lands the bulldoze, and then all of these numbers that get a little bit awkward or speeds that you're worried about aren't a factor for Aaron anymore. That Charizard sits at, in my opinion, one of the more awkward speeds because it's quite a common speed. Yeah. And once you just take that guessing game out of the equation, that's absolutely huge. So that I think is going to be a difference maker. And just the fact that Groudon is going to be going early just applies pressure. Mm -hmm. There's no way to deny that that applies a lot of pressure. There's options to change the speed as well. I mean, it has access to Bulldoze, has access to other moves that lower speed. I yep. don't want to reveal it in case Aaron's trying to keep it secret. So we'll save that one for later, but I'll let you ruminate on it as home as we get into game number two. Game number two. Bit of a different lead now coming out from Benny. It's going to be that Groudon and that Raichu as Aaron is going with what worked in that game number one. We will see the Ndidi and the Charizard once again, but based on the move options for both of these Pokemon, Aaron has a has plenty of different ways that this could play out. Aaron's just going with that hyper-offensive lead. We know that the, the Helping Hand can come through and just power up the G-Max Wildfire and, and make it take a knockout that it might not traditionally get. On the other side of it, though, I do like that Benny has dropped the game style. Yes, it sat on the field for three turns last game, but none of those turns felt particularly impactful. The lack of, you know, being able to take the hit even after the light screen and reflect sort of showed that it might not be the one in this matchup. Yes, the Spirit Break tried to slow it down, but I just don't think it was enough. That is a nice adaptation from Benny to see that and then leave the Grim Snarl at least out of the leads. It could be in the back, but I'd be shocked if it wasn't Zashian and Charizard to, to round this team out. Mm -hmm. The Raichu obviously has a better tight matchup against the, the Charizard, but couldn't do the requisite amount of damage in the same way that Aaron's Charizard did to him in, in turn one of the last game. Yeah, for sure. For this second turn or the first turn, of this game number two, uh, Aaron is still going to go ahead and Gigantamax that Charizard, but Ndidi has left the field in favor of his own Groudon. Um, so maybe maybe expecting some type of uh, fake out or maybe an electric type attack going into that particular slot, but Benny's also feeling very confident here. Gonna go for a Dy Dynamax as well. And it's going to be the Groudon this time. I like that. I think the Groudon can apply a lot more pressure back, and that should be the focus as the Dynamax Pokemon. It's got three turns to make an impact. Groudon may just be able to deal with the Charizard here, and that could be absolutely huge. But Charizard Ooh. playing it very safe. I like that from Aaron, respecting the potential Dynamax on Benny's side and being able to guard against that with, of course, the Max Guard, which does prevent against those Max moves. Ooh, but the Groudon gets switched into a huge Max Quake there, which ends up being a critical hit. It is able to hang on, but those special defense boosts right now going over to both the Raichu and the Groudon, that's that's pretty big. That's really helpful if you're the, uh, uh, you know, if you're on Benny's side of the field. I think you would have liked the Raichu to leave the field and then get something else in yep. to, to take the special defense boost for it, something like the Charizard maybe. But, you know, the Groudon took so much and that switch in really tough to justify when your Groudon takes that much damage. It's not in a position to really push on and be this focal point that takes a couple hits. That said, we know it's a choice scarf, so maybe all it needs is just one turn mm -hmm. to land something like the bulldoze, yep. like it's doing here. It's next to the Charizard, it's free to do that, and that is going to be the difference maker. The Raichu, of course, taking huge damage from it, and the Raichu might not be able to get out after that as well. We're about to find out here as it is going to be the Charizard that moves next. G-Max Wildfire under the sun as well, going right into that Groudon. We'll take it to about half HP. Yeah, the Groudon uh, definitely taking a bruising there. Uh, but Raichu Ooh. lands the Nuzzle. It didn't get to go first, which I think the Bulldoze definitely helped out there. But if you leave it alone, your Charizard's now paralyzed. So this definitely gets interesting. I think you wanted to paralyze it first. 
then, uh, you know, be able to match Rockfall it. Mm -hmm. Didn't quite work that way because of the Triscarf Bulldoze, but still a really good turn there for Benny, being able to take out that Dynamax uh, threat from Aaron's side of the field while he's still got his Dynamax going for another turn after this. Really nicely done. Yeah, at least Aaron was able to set up the GMAX Wildfire chip, so that is going to be able to activate at the end of every single turn for the next few turns. Um, and the Groudon is still here, so maybe getting locked into Bulldoze is not necessarily a bad thing, depending on what is going to be next to it. We didn't even see that fourth and final Pokemon choice from that game number one. So let's go ahead and find out maybe what it is, it unless indeed he comes back out onto the field. Aaron either has to throw back out the Ndidi or reveal his fourth and final Pokemon, which I would imagine saving the, the fourth Pokemon for the end is probably wiser, so Benny doesn't know all four and can't play around it. Mm -hmm. That said, though, this Groudon's got one more turn of Dynamax, and whatever comes on the field should be in a good position. It is the Grim Snarl, uh, maybe trying to set up those screens for a late-game situation, but the reveal of the Solgaleo now gives Benny really good information on what screens he needs to set up. It does give him very good information about that, but Solgaleo is one of those Pokemon that likes to run the weakness policy. Mm -hmm. And with the Bulldoze right next to it that that Groudon is locked into, this makes a lot of sense as this is kind of Aaron's last ditch effort of making sure he's able to get out as much damage as possible when he knows that he doesn't have Dynamax or Gigantamax anymore. And it's just an Ndidi in the back. You know, that's gonna be really tough uh, if there might be like a Rillaboom in the back for, for Benny. This could definitely be Aaron's go button, so to speak, where he just bulldozes, sets up the weakness policy, and just takes a knockout every single turn with, with Sol Galeo. Maybe, you know, if the Groudon gets knocked out, you bring in the Ndidi and you can buy it that extra turn or so. The Groudon's mm. saving itself, doesn't want to bulldoze into the Sol Galeo. Uh, maybe a missed opportunity, or maybe just trying to save some information for the following game if it goes that far. No, I really like this because, you know, you might not want to be locked into Bulldoze for later. Maybe you oh, want no. to reset the Choice uh, choice Scarf, but uh, the Max Quake is going to go right into the Protected Sogaleo, and you're going to be taking more damage from the that than you would have from the Bulldoze. But uh, let's see what's going to happen here as we wait for those Special Defense boosts to proc, and there is the Weakness Policy. Yeah, you gave it over, and maybe Aaron just reading into that didn't need to proc his own just decided, you know what, I'll let you do it for me. And now this Sogaleo is really quite scary. I'm just going to be able to, to try and take a knockout every single turn. That's the goal. Indeed, he's going to allow him to buy some of that time as well. And with the Choice Scarf in play, I actually quite like that. Uh, being able to save that Choice Scarf Groudon for an end game, yes, mm -hmm. it's sitting on, I believe it's five health. Um, but being able to switch that in at the end, maybe in a one-on-one -on -one situation and just win that matchup, could be absolutely essential. Maybe wanting to pivot to a different move. Uh, doesn't want to just sit and bulldoze for the rest of the game. So this Groudon looking a lot easier to deal with now. It's not Dynamax. The Grim Snarl, as we saw in game number one, not able to apply the offensive pressure. So really, all the Solgaleo needs to do is target down Grim Snarl's partners one at a time, mm -hmm. leave it uh, just struggling to, to really make that impact um, because it's not going to be able to throw out anything to lower the attack. I mean, indeed, he's just making this a, a bit of a, a surefire knockout with the helping hands. Yeah, Sun Steel Strike coming out from the Solgaleo. And and this is really important to note as well is that the Solgaleo is, you know, Solgaleo as a Pokemon is very fast, but it will be targeting down the Groudon there, noticing that that is going to be the more offensive threat to get rid of as the Spirit Break comes through right into the Ndidi, but you know, Grim Snarl's not going to be doing too much damage to your team as a whole. No, it's not an offensive threat. It's not something that people look at as a way to carry that game and, and clutch it out. So it's also just going to be whittled down by the GMAX Wildfire. It, it's not It's not even been targeted yet. It's just taken that much damage between turns, which is absolutely crazy to me. And when you think about how impactful it is, the Zashian revealed as Benny's uh, last Pokemon does get the Intrepid Sword boost. Um, but it's not going to be an easy ride for it to be able to, to get through this Solgaleo at all. No, it, it should still be faster. Uh, just looking at kind of like, you know, how quick these Pokemon are just side by side. But the Ndidi really makes this one difficult in terms of how do you even get the damage onto the Solgaleo to be able to knock it out? Well, and in the end game as well, you've got Choice Scarf Groudon in the back. That's going to be a tough one. While Ndidi, you know, can't buy that many turns, it can buy this turn. And if Benny takes the bait, Aaron could just wrap this one up essentially in this game. The Sacred Sword, of course, not the target it was looking for. Um, and this, yeah, this could take a, a turn here, to say the least. 
Absolutely. Solgaleo going up into the sky once again for another Sunsteel strike as it connects with the Grimmsnarl Ooh. this time. Really nice knockout there, but there is still that Zacian, but there is a Groudon in the back for Eren that gets to freely switch in now because the Ndidi just got knocked out. Yeah, the Ndidi just got fouled and Zacian getting a little bit as well from the GMAX Wildfire. Nobody is safe really in this one, but I run up two Pokemon to one. It's not going to uh, take any damage from the Sandstorm. So, uh, you know, Benny still has to hit the Groudon. And we know for a fact that Zacian is just single target. So it's guaranteed to be taking a hit in this turn of course the sun uh, would help the groudon um and that groudon could just wrap up the game here for aaron real quick um this is a, a surprisingly offensive team considering the options on it mm -hmm. and aaron has just powered through these both of these games yeah it, this is such a uh, interesting matchup for both sides just because of the different pokemon that are there really to support the Groudons and the Charizards, but Groudon with that choice scarf does go for the Fire Punch. It's not quite enough to be able to knock out the Zacian, so the Zacian is able to get off another attack with the Sacred Sword, but Solgaleo hangs on to finish the job with a Sunsteel Strike to fell the Zacian, and that should wrap up this game and this set for Aaron. Yeah, it's been two very quick, very offensive games, and I think Aaron has been in control throughout all of them. I like Benny's team. It's it's clearly a proven team. Zashin Groudon is your, your restricted pairing. Definitely works. But Aaron Zeng, 